Hi all, um, so today I'm going to show you how you can extend your wireless networking at home uh, using two wireless modem routers. Um, I just got it, got this setup uh, working only a couple of days ago. Um, the, it's actually quite a pain in the neck to get it working because there, there, there isn't an, a standard defined across different models and brands of uh, modem routers out there. The um, uh, I've, I've been going through the internet and uh, to find videos, articles, and forums, and they all have uh, different setups for one brand or one model to another. So um, I, I thought I'd post uh, one today for an Asus and Netgear routers uh, to, to hopefully help uh, some of you out there. And let's go through the um, components that I have. Uh, bring the camera closer here. This is the um, the, the Asus WL600G uh, wireless modem routers, and the the second component is this one. It's the Netgear. This one is a Netgear. Um, sorry, <laughs> Netgear DG834G version 4, and the Asus will act as the um, main access point, and this Netgear here will act as the uh, repeater. So this is the uh, configuration that I have for my computers and my routers. As you can see here on my computer screen, so I have my PC sitting at one corner of the uh, living area and the Asus WL600G uh, just sitting next to it. And I have positioned the Netgear DGA34G uh, just around there. And then I have my uh, Mac in my, in my room in one corner of it. Uh, this to get you some idea of distance, uh, distance-wise, the uh, one corner where I put the PC, all the way to the uh, stairs. Uh, that's about, I would say, about six meters, and then go up the stairs and go across. It's it's good, like three or four meters, and then gets to my room, which is um, uh, from the entrance of the room to the uh, computer itself. It's about another three meters, and the Asus WL600G. Um, the signal uh, strength is simply can't make the distance all the way to my uh, new Mac Mini. Uh, I think the signal goes out at around about uh, where I position the Netgear A34G. Now with the Netgear set up there, I can finally have uh, in, um, LAN connectivity, therefore internet connectivity in my room. So now I'm going to show you how you configure the um, the Asus WL600G. In this case, that it will act as the uh, the main access point. Uh, first of all, that on it, uh, you'll need to configure is that um, the wireless bridge setting. Uh, to do this, you log into your um, Asus router uh, homepage. Uh, in my case, I use the default uh, out of the box uh, settings, which is uh, accessible from the IP address 192.168.1.1. On the left hand side, uh, once you get into the home page, you click on the left hand side, wireless, and that menu expands, and you can see a wireless bridge menu. You come there, and you see these three fields. So the first one, AP mode, uh, make sure you change it to access point. And the second field, bridge restrict, make sure you change that to enable. And with this remote bridges MAC address field, this is the uh, field that you put in the MAC address of the, um, the external router that will act as a repeater. In this case, so that will be my Netgear DG A34G. So that is that it's my address in there. Okay, so that's step one uh, for the Asus WL600G. And the second step, what you need to do now is you go to the advanced setup on the left hand side. Then on the expanded menu, you select LAN, and this is where you configure all the DHCP, yeah, the uh, LAN IP addresses that's allowed on the uh, on this network. And in order, to, in order for the Netgear DG-A34G version 4 wireless router to act as a repeater in this uh, Asus uh, broadcasted network, it needs to have uh, an, an IP reserve in the, in the Asus network itself. And that I, IP I, I recommend to be static. So therefore, uh, I was in this uh, scenario, since the Asus has the 192.168.1.1 IP address, I'd like the Netgear to have 192.168.1.2. And to do this, I go to this uh, LAN page of the Asus um, configuration page. Um, the enable the HTTP server, that sh uh, should still be uh, checked in the radio box. But the start IP address field, you know, I think by default uh, it started with 192.168.1.2. So 
so I just moved that up by one. So it's now one nine two one six eight dot one dot three, and nothing else I have changed on that one. And now the last step that I need to do for this um, wireless distribution system configuration is that you go back to wireless and you go back to um, security. And in this case, you go to um, network authentication. You select um, make sure it's like shared. And then you select WEP encryption enabled and choose the highest encryption strength out there. And before I continue, I'd like to point out that the WEP encryption is about as high as you can get, unfortunately, for this WDS setting. I've tried all different settings with WPA, WPA2, with or without the PSK pre shared key, and different encryption, the TKI, TKIP and AES and all that, 802.1x. None of them work. WEP is the only one that works, as you'll find uh, when you go to a research on other websites on the, on the internet, or if you go to other uh, videos as well. So WEP 128 bits again is the highest um, encryption security settings that you can have. And to, I'll just show you quickly how you can do that in this one. So you select the network authentication to be shared, WEP encryption to be enabled, and strength to be a 128 bit. And now you click the button, set encryption keys. In this case, you set in your uh, passphrase. Say if you want to put in ABC, put ABC, and then you can see the, the network keys uh, in there. And make sure you note it down somewhere because you'll need it for your other wireless clients as well as um, for the Netgear itself that I'll show you in the next step.